Now for your forewarned weather with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. Your Friday weather, keeping things interesting with monsoon moisture in place. We begin in southern Utah. Ivan's live view from our Black Desert Sky Cam. You're noticing the cloud cover and the storms out there. We have seen wet weather and temperatures have now dropped to 97 in Ivan's. They made it to 108 at that weather station. They're not the only ones seeing some storms up the road in Cedar City as you look west from the airport. Very unsettled conditions. Storms are moving from west to east today. And as we look at the forewarn radar, we can see the areas where they've blossomed with the help of this daytime heating. Jumping down to Washington County in the St. George area, you can see exactly why. We've seen some wet weather. Downtown St. George had that wet pavement. Cedar City and the Iron County area also with those storms. Continuing up I-15, you get towards Antimony and Loa on the I-70 corridor. That has been active. Higher terrain, seeing those storms develop, some of them rolling into valleys. Castle Country dealing with some thunderstorms. Price, we'll see another here as we get through the next hour. Duchesne County and Heber as well as Flaming Gorge and then north of Green River. Wasatch Front fairly quiet, some echoes of moisture towards Cache Valley. We've watched that cell on the state line advance in the last hour, but it doesn't look like it's holding together as well as it initially did. This monsoon surge yesterday delivered measurable moisture in many locations, including more than half an inch in Harriman and measurable moisture at the Beaver Airport. It's a good thing because we've been very dry. Our newest drought monitor rankings are out for the week. They came out yesterday, and as we look Look, we see those abnormally dry conditions that have spread through Salt Lake County into the Great Salt Lake Desert and Mountains. So a lot more yellow on the map this week, but we're still not facing drought conditions, which is good news. As we look at the Salt Lake water year, which begins October 1st, you're able to clearly see that we've had several months where we hit average or we were well above it. High February, we see you. March was healthy as well. But as we made it into April, we started to drop below average. We stayed that way for May. June was rough with only three tenths there and one day of measurable moisture. And here we are in July with this strong area of high pressure dominating the weather story. My view from West Valley, we look towards the Wasatch, a few clouds over the Wasatch Mountains right now, higher terrain storms. Upper 90s along the Wasatch Front as we sit at 98 in Salt Lake City. The capital city actually warmer, or just about in neck and neck with St. George's. They've dropped below triple digits hitting 99. Same number in Moab, where you see those 80s, places like Emory, Price. We know storms are overhead. Heber's part of this as well. We're going to see those numbers dropping from the 90s to the 80s with fairly dry conditions and just a slight chance of a storm for the Wasatch Front as we get through tonight. Saturday also keeps moisture in the forecast. The positioning of that high pressure slides a little further west, just goes whoop. And as it does, we have that lingering moisture in place, so the chance of some higher elevation storms for Saturday are around. Futurecast tracks it to the minute so you know where and when if you're going to be recreating. Tonight by 10 p.m., central Utah has those storms still popping, isolated in nature. The cloud cover you're seeing is that mid-level moisture trapped underneath the ridge. As we head to our Saturday, you can see South Central Mountains tapping into that, and then the spine of Utah has a chance of an isolated storm that holds Saturday night. And into Sunday, we also see that lingering moisture in the southern half of the state. That will allow for storm development, and that trend is something we see for the next seven days. Yeah, in southern Utah. Probable flash flood potential in several locations. Know before you go, Zion, Capitol Reef, Bryce for your Saturday, low-lying areas just not safe. Triple digits, hot and hazy in the north with storms in the south. 109 in St. George, hot enough, but we know as the storms roll in, we see those temperatures really level off, isolated to scattered potential through Pioneer Day and even past it. Here's the Wasatch Front got a pack of triple digits that I want to share with you. I can't take 100 all by myself, folks. 102 on Tuesday and Wednesday, so the heat will be there, and it's something we're going to monitor closely. Drier in the northern portion of the state for the weekend with that northerly flow from high pressure. Okay. You don't have to share the hundreds with us. Oh, I do. You can keep Sarah, up. Sarah, I got an extra